<laughs> we got tea on the ones and twos today with my instrumental to start this week. For DMX. <laughs> Rest in peace, dear Max. Hope you guys are enjoying the start to your week. What's good, everybody? What's good, beautiful people? Just want to check in with you guys. We are currently in Wildwood, Florida. Give you guys a quick view of where we are. Okay, we had a truck stop. TA truck stop down in Florida. It's a beautiful day down here. It's beautiful weather. And we are awaiting, uh, we pick up our next load on Wednesday. And we are awaiting, uh, just taking some time to rest. And also, uh, get some work done on our truck. Should I turn the music on? Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> it's going to give it to you. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Getting some work done on that truck. So we got to get, how many tires we got to get? Uh, we're going to do all eight. So we're going to do an eight piece. On our back treads, our back tires. Um, and that's going to gonna run us a hefty pretty, uh, penny. Excuse me. Trucking, you make the money, yes. But maintaining your truck, especially if you are owner operators and you own your own truck, the maintenance, the fuel, those things can add up. So it's extremely important that you have a reserve set aside or you understand how to use credit cards to your advantage, earn points, and create business credit, but also pay, pay those things in a timely manner. So we've learned a lot, uh, but I wanna talk to you guys today about why experiential marketing and working in the event marketing has been essential for us and it has taught us a lot of transferable skills that we are able to incorporate in different businesses and even in the trucking industry um, as owner operators so we started back in the industry at different times i started um, over 11 years ago t started way before that like 14 years ago and um at the entry level right as a brand ambassador and as a brand ambassador, for those of you who don't know, um, that is the position where you have to essentially learn the ropes, but also obtain your opportunities um, on your own. You have to continuously network, you have to continuously apply, you have to continuously be on the computer. You know, T and I, um, back when we met in 2009, we were both working in the industry as brand ambassadors and I was working full time, you know, working as a brand ambassador, team lead, and even had did one short tour. Um, but T was, you know, part time in the industry and working also full time as a police officer. So um, with that being said, we had the opportunity to start from the ground up from the entry level and we would spend hours a day. I remember like sitting at the computer and applying for jobs, setting up profiles, and um, continuing to build relationships with agencies and account managers. And that's something that I think a lot of individuals starting in the industry take for granted. A lot of people want a handout or want somebody to give them a job, but you have to understand that in order to grow, in order to excel in this industry, in order to move up in the experiential marketing industry, you gotta start from the bottom and you got to really uh, truly understand the industry right and you have to really understand what it takes because people say oh you know being a brand ambassador is easy you just sample you go talk to people you engage with consumers yes that is part of the the roles and responsibilities but if you get in this industry like i did starting just off of craigslist ad and you find that okay corporate america may not be for you and you want to create your own path and you like the fact that you have the freedom to book your own opportunities and book your own events, but you are trying to figure out, okay, how do you navigate and make this a career? You gotta understand that you gotta walk before you crawl and you're gonna have some instances where it may be tough or you gotta truly navigate and figure out how you wanna move up in the industry. From brand ambassador, you can go to team lead, end market manager, tour manager, I did it all. 
T did it all too. I went from brand ambassador to team lead to tour manager to end market manager to regional manager. And we then saw the advantages of us working as a team because a lot of agencies wouldn't hire us because we were just boyfriend and girlfriend. We weren't married yet. So we had that obstacle, right? Um, but we were able to overcome that and agencies and account managers took a chance on us and booked us as co-tour either managers or co-tour partners and it worked out well and we were able to excel obtain opportunities and then T saw the advantages of getting a CDLA license right mm -hmm. and why did you feel like that was good, good to get that uh, it was a shortage too on the experiential mental side of drivers so I, I thought about it um, and I said, man, uh, they need, it's a, it's a, a vital uh, component of experiential marketing, especially on the tour side. And I said, man, this, this will, can advance us within the experiential marketing uh, parameters. So I said, I'm gonna jump right here. Let me go get my uh, CDLs. And then too, I, I, I always wanted to learn how to drive a truck. So if you're a person who adventures, who will always want to achieve something else different, yeah, it was like an opportunity. And I can use the, also it was free too to go to the uh, school. So I was like, man, that's that's a win-win situation. So I went ahead, applied, and I saw the benefits of it. And I saw that the industry needed it. And it was a, a, a vital component of the, uh, within the experiential marketing realm on the tour side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cause he got his, you know, back in 2011. And at the time, like he said, it was a shortage. And that was one of the quickest ways to move to tour management status and to be able to make uh, a great amount of money in a shorter period of time. Because at the end of the day, you are trading your time for money, right? Time is the most valuable commodity that we have as individuals. So for us, the name of the game was, okay, how can we maximize our time, our income, but get back more of our time? So after T got his CDL, I was like, okay, you know what? I gotta do it too, because what's better than having one CDL A to a manager, you need two. So I went and got my CDL, females, all of you who are thinking about getting it, you know, it's definitely something to look into um, and invest in. If you're not a person that don't like being in big trucks and you scared of trucks, I wouldn't advise you to get it. But if it's something you're thinking about doing, it's definitely a great investment. And I'm gonna tell you guys why, you know, in a few minutes, but it allowed us from an experiential marketing standpoint to market ourselves as true CDLA tour teams and um, apply for those management opportunities. And I cannot tell you guys, the minute uh, T got his and he went directly on tour with Army. I mean, he had a job waiting before he even finished school. And then I went and got mine, followed suit. And then after that, the doors just opened for us to move into the opportunities that we really wanted with regards to being CDLA tour managers. You know, we were able to open up doors where you didn't see a lot of minorities getting those opportunities. We were being compensated great. We were working seven, eight months on, had three, four months off. And we were able to obtain the investment properties, you know, to to see the light at the end of the tunnel from a financial side, right? And a, and move into financial freedom and be able to, to build the, the wealth and, and do the things that we wanted to do. So it was definitely a great investment for us. Um, and it paved the way for us to be able to take the skills that we learned from a management standpoint um, and use them to better ourselves, you know, in the industry. So it got to the point where we didn't have to look for opportunities. It was calling, they was calling us left and right. Mm -hmm. uh, and saying, don't take, and we had offers where we have even uh, age account managers um, and also executives saying, don't, don't do that tour we'll pay you more so when it became competitive like that when they it was a it was demand it was like it was a great feeling to you know to know that also also we put out we put work in too as well yeah. they see the results of working with us to uh, it made their job a lot less uh, it made them it, like easier for them on their side but also because we had again both of us having our cdls they said man two two cdl drivers that's it's cheaper on, on for, for the on the other insurance. side. Their insurance is cheaper too as well to bring on two CDLA drivers. Um, the versus bringing someone who doesn't have a CDL to run their uh, the uh, to drive those vehicles, those particular uh, large vehicles and everything. Sometimes they're not. Uh, it's not a CDLA required, but the insurance cost is less. So they was thumbs up to us all the time. And again, 
it became well it, it became competitive we'd be dealing back and forth with a couple account managers uh, and executives um, asking for our services so it's a great feeling so mm -hmm. the CDLA it was a great uh, movement and um, and thought process strategy going now coincide like Jay said we was going to you bring both of them together from where we at now uh, we're starting us a trucking company uh, what's great about it on the tour side you learn how to navigate and you got to learn how to troubleshoot at any point in time mm -hmm. so just like in the experiential marketing field and the trucking field you, you have to learn how to troubleshoot so anytime the issue um, arise you have to figure it out sometimes it's not your fault because guess what you probably have everything aligned it probably be uh, the shipping company uh, error or it may be an error I'm gonna give you an error with the, the trailer that you have and it's not our trailer that we own uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a company it's something that we were pulling someone else trailer and their trailer might have an issue on there so those things that I, I learned how to troubleshoot on the experiential marketing side when I was at events dealing with trailers and, de and dealing and doing setup and everything I was able to troubleshoot easily like they say, you can make anywhere. You can make it on any tour as long as you have zip ties, mm -hmm. duct tape, and probably a hammer or something that's a screwdriver. So those things right there, those Allen zip Ridge. ties, and your Allen wrench, zip ties and the duct tape, it go along too on this side. Cause I, I have those. I brought those tools along from the experiential marketing side and have them in the truck. So a lot of times things arose. Uh, those things I had to troubleshoot, I needed, boom, I had right there some zip ties. Like with the, the trailer handle, sometimes they're not always working properly. Boom, I put some zip ties on there. We was able to get and we had to keep moving. So we weren't down. Yeah. So it doesn't it, it doesn't cut into our time and our cost too as well. And then also um having to book our own loads and self dispatch. Just like in the experiential marketing industry, you gotta go out and apply for opportunities and build relationships with account managers and staffing. Uh, coordinators it's the same thing you know you only gonna get out what you put in that's expect especially in life but in the expansion market industry it transferred here in the trucking industry as well and just like we find ourselves like I told you hustling for opportunities in the event market space we building relationships over here with dispatchers and agents and brokers so you gotta have some grit about you um, you got to be able, like T said, to troubleshoot, have those transferable skills where you understand, okay, on an event site, the um, on-site client is giving me a hard time. The account manager may not be communicating. It's a weekend. They they take the weekend off truly when you're on an event site and they not nowhere to be found. Or your brand ambassadors didn't show up on time or they being unprofessional and the client is asking you to, to let someone go. How do you navigate through that as an EXP, as a tour manager, or even as a team lead, how you navigate through that and how you troubleshoot that and handle that can determine how your event, oftentimes, whether it's successful or not, or how um, you are perceived as an EXP with that agency, whether it's an account manager or a staff and coordinator. So there are a lot of transferable skills, troubleshooting, being able to um, navigate quickly and adjust to changes on the fly. Communication. Being able to effectively communicate. Not just, you know, when you want to, but effectively communicating. Maintaining a professional appearance. You know, even as a trucker, you know, you got to be professional because even in, in, in the experiential market industry, when you're engaging with consumers, you got to be professional in the way that you speak to them and how you carry yourself. And even when you're dealing with account managers and agency owners. You gotta be professional in your communication. Making sure you CYA with emails. We do the same thing over here. Put everything in writing. So, the experiential marketing, I was telling T the other day when I was driving, it has been such a blessing because if I would've just stuck to my corporate American mentality, living it with the so quote unquote American dream of working for somebody and until I got a pension and retiring, I wouldn't be where I am today. Right, we wouldn't be, uh, we wouldn't have excelled in experiential marketing the way we did, and then even with the pandemic, we wouldn't have been able to pivot and say, okay, we got CDLs, let's take those CDLs and buy our own truck and start our own trucking company. But the skills that I learned in experiential marketing, the trials, the tribulations, the bad, the the horrible account managers, the not so good tours. Um, the crazy VAs, 
the crazy to a managers, the great to a managers that taught us a lot, that we learned from, right? Um, the awesome experiences that we had, the friends, the connections, all of that was a great opportunity because it allowed us to get to where we are and to be able to um, look at the experiential market industry and say, man, like it was a huge benefit and we were able to move into so many different areas. Financial freedom, learn financial responsibility, and more importantly, our time, like get our time back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, again, the transition, uh, working in the experiential market has been very um, beneficial to working in the trucking industry. And just, just, just like Jay said, being able to go and approach different people mm -hmm. and, and speak about the trucking industry and Boom, that's, what, that's how you build your network. They tell you about different loads. They tell you about different areas where you should be, where your truck should be to get the highest paying rate for loads and all of that. So by you just networking and speaking with people just like as you would do in, in, the, uh, in the experiential marketing realm, when you're networking with people and they tell you other um, co-experiential uh, marketing professionals and you and they start speaking about events, what's going on or future events in the truck industry. They tell you about what's going on what's going to be happening as far as how the freight is going to be moving. So they give you some insight there because guess what? You're out there networking. You're out there talking to people. You're not scared of people. Even through the pandemic, we was out there still talking to people. You know, we was covered up and everything. Still talking to other trucker, truckers and getting the information there as well. And a lot of truckers, they're very open to and speaking about it. Um, no matter what race you are or who you are, they just, they're just open, man. And, and it's been great far as with the transition and starting the trucking company and again with this with the pivot i mean i'm kind of honestly uh i'm not happy that covid happened but it, it it introduced us to another way to strategically to be financial free even more so um, uh, it's a blessing opportunity you know through it all it, 2020 was rough as far as um the country the, the country and everything but through the through the you got to take the good with the bad. So through that bad, we found something else too out of the two as well to to make it a blessing too as well. So you make you make the lemons, you make it to lemonade, and that's what we're doing. And as we close out, I just want to motivate you guys. You know, whether you work in the event marketing, experiential marketing industry, whether you are EXP or not, you know, find alternate sources of income. Start thinking, having a forward thinking mindset. Mindset, excuse me, and figuring out how you can create multiple streams, how you can create additional revenue outside of a pandemic happening, and how, if you work in the experiential market industry, how you can take the transferable skills that you're learning, whether you are working as a brand ambassador, a product specialist, whether you are on the tour side, what transferable skills is this industry teaching me on a day-to-day -day basis that I can apply in my own business to develop my own and create my own uh, source of financial freedom because at the end of the day like i said guys time is money and you want to be able um to stop trading your time for my money but more importantly do something that you love if it is experiential marketing kudos to you continue to work in the industry but if you're gonna work in the industry make sure you know your worth and you're getting paid you know for your time and for the value that you're gonna bring to any event or any program or any tour so don't short your short change yourself don't sell yourself short, but I will tell you this, guys. You got to put the work in. It's not going to come easy. You know, it didn't come easy for us. You guys are looking at the fruits of our labor that we put in 10, 12, 13 years before. But if y'all were down in the trenches with us, even three, four years ago, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now because we were probably on a tour or doing a program where we was going through it. But us going through it and learning all the things that we did has gotten us to where we are right now. So let us, our story, the things that we've gone through, motivate you to keep going, whether that's in experiential marketing or even building your own brand and business, all right? So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. You guys enjoy your day, enjoy the rest of your week. And remember guys, your time is the most important commodity you have, all right? Success, your level of success, will be determined by the people around you, all right? So definitely always keep that in mind, all right? Talk to you guys soon. Later out.